Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So I thought that it was finally time that I go ahead and do a dedicated video on all of my snakes. I thought that it would be really fun to just sit down and give you guys a look at every single snake I own and tell you a little bit about them because I do own about 12 snakes right now and sometimes you guys don't get to see them very often and I know that you guys definitely want to see more of them so that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna sit down, I'm gonna get out my snakes and we're going to meet every single one of them. So just a quick note before we get into the video, I just wanted to say Pet Fest tickets are on sale now. The link to get your tickets will be in my description, but make sure you get them because tickets are limited, especially VIP. They are very, very limited. Pet Fest is going to be so much fun. It'll be in Phoenix, Arizona this year, and there's going to be so many creators there. We have over 20 of them, so you can definitely come and meet me and all of your other favorite creators. So make sure to get your tickets. Once again, they will be in the description down below. With all that said now, let's just go ahead and start meeting all of my snakes. We're gonna go ahead and start with my newest snake here, and that is Richard, my Brazilian rainbow boa. So here is Richard right here. He is just a little tiny baby Brazilian rainbow boa, but he has been so, so awesome. So I just recently got Richard about two months ago, and he has been an absolutely amazing snake since I've got him. He's so calm, he has such a good temperament, he's eating well and everything. So I just could not ask for a better snake than Richard. He has been so awesome. Rainbow boas are a bit more advanced than a lot of the other snakes I own because they are quite a bit more sensitive to things like humidity and temperature. They do need a very high humidity, especially as babies or they actually risk like dehydrating and drying out. So it's very important to monitor your humidity. And same with temperatures with them, they cannot really tolerate temperatures as warm as a lot of other snakes because again, that can contribute to them, possibly like dehydrating, which you never want to happen. So while Richard is just this very, very tiny rainbow boa right now, one day he will be quite a large snake. They can grow around five to six feet long as adults and obviously he'll get quite a bit thicker than this. So even though he's a tiny little dude right now, he will definitely be a lot bigger in the future. And now we're gonna go ahead and meet Willow, my children's python. So Willow here is a juvenile children's python, so she will get larger than this. But children's pythons are actually fairly small snakes. As adults, they get around three feet long. So while she will get bigger, she will not get like insanely large or anything. So children's pythons are actually an Australian species of snake. So for any of my Australian viewers out there, this is actually one of the species that you guys can own. I'm sure you guys already know that, but you know, just putting a little fact out there. She is definitely one of my funnier snakes because she does have a bit of an attitude. As I was saying, she does have a bit of an attitude to her, which is why I do have to be careful when handling her. Anyways, I'm gonna put her back because clearly she's not having that much fun and then we will talk about her after she goes back. Okay, so I just went ahead and I put Willow back in her cage. As you guys could see, she clearly wasn't a fan of being out. Um, she is really moody, which is very common with especially young children's pythons. A lot of the time they calm down as they get older, but when they're younger, they can be a little bit nippy and all that stuff. So I went and put her back. Basically, I just really don't like forcing my animals to be out and be handled when they clearly aren't enjoying it. So yeah, that was Willow. <laughs> She's my children's python. Despite being a little bit nippy and moody, children's pythons are one of my favorite species of snake and I don't know what it is about them. I just love them so much even with their attitudes. I think that they're amazing, amazing snakes and they're just so wonderful and interesting. So I'm really excited to have her and I'm excited to see her continue growing and maybe one day she'll calm down. Maybe she won't, but we can hope. So here we have my Kenyan sand boa comet. So he is another snake who can be a little bit moody Every single time I go to get him out of his cage, he's very defensive, but usually once I get him out and kind of get him on my hand, he's all good. He just doesn't really like the initial pickup. But as you can see, now that he's out, he's doing just fine. He can be moody if he wants to. So Kenyan Sambos are really cool pet snakes because as you can see, they're very tiny. So he is actually a full grown male Kenyan Sambo. He's 
almost three years old now and this is as big as he will get. I really like Kenyan sand boas. I would love to own more in the future. But yeah, I don't know. I just really like Kenyan sand boas. I think they're really neat. They have funny little faces. It's pretty cute if you ask me. And I think that they have really cool colors and patterns. Comet here is just a normal morph Kenyan sand boa, but I think that they're so neat, like the black and brown spotted pattern. I think it's just super cool, and they do come in, in quite a few other color morphs as well, which I really love. Kenyan sand boas are just real neat, so I don't really know what to say about them. I think they're just really cool snakes, and this is Comet. Enjoy Comet. So the next snake I want to introduce you guys to is Toby. Toby is one of my ball pythons and he is just one of the sweetest snakes ever but also my most difficult snake ever. So Toby is a pastel pied ball python which is why he has this interesting color pattern here with like the white spots on it. That's the pied gene in him. Where are you going? And while Toby is a total sweetheart, as I mentioned, he's been one of my most difficult snakes ever, and that is because he is so picky. He is the pickiest eater out of all of my snakes, which can be frustrating, but we deal with it. He likes to stress me out sometimes, but that's okay. I deal with it. He's just a picky little dude, aren't you? Ball pythons are one of my favorite snakes personality wise because they're just typically so friendly and docile and curious but their pickiness can be a little bit frustrating at times for sure but this is Toby. So next up we have another ball python. The next few snakes are actually going to be ball pythons but um, this particular ball python that I'm introducing you guys to now is my banana ball python named Casper. So I actually do not have Casper out with me as you guys can see and, and that is because he is actually currently deep in shed right now. His skin is all dull, his eyes are blued over and when a snake is in shed they actually pretty well go blind. They can't see anything because their eye caps are all dull and so because of all of that it can be very stressful to handle a snake while they are shedding. So it's really best to leave them alone. So I will not be taking Casper out, but I will um, overlay some clips of him so that you guys still get to see a good look at him because I want you guys to meet him obviously, but I also do not want to stress him out. So as I mentioned, Casper is a banana ball python. He is a male, he is about two years old, and he is so awesome. He is similar to Toby in the sense that he is a very calm, docile, curious snake, but thankfully he is not a picky eater, which makes my life simpler. So thank you, Casper. So there you guys go, that is Casper. Once again, another ball python. So this here is Angel. Angel is actually my only female ball python. All of my other ones are males, which means she will likely get quite a bit larger than my other snakes. Well, not all my other snakes, but my other ball pythons as females do tend to get quite a bit larger than males. So Angel here is a normal morph slash a wild type ball python. So essentially this is what ball pythons look like in the wild in captivity. There's all sorts of different color morphs and patterns but when you find a ball python in the wild it's probably going to look something like this. And look how cute she is just with her head up there. That's so cute. Why are you being so cute, Angel? What a cute snake. So there we go, and there is Angel. So next up here is, once again, another ball python. Promise you, there's only one more ball python, and then there will be some other snake species. But right here, we have Titan. So Titan was actually the first snake that I ever got. He was my very first pet snake. He is around five years old. So because of that, he is my largest and my oldest snake but he is very awesome. So Titan is a lesser ball python, which is why he has this sort of light brown caramel colored pattern that I really like. Where are you going? What are you trying to find? <laughs> so as I mentioned, Titan is a full grown uh, male ball python. So this is about the size that they will get. So Toby and Casper will probably get around his size once they are full grown. And then Angel will probably get a little bit bigger than him because as I mentioned, females do tend to get larger than males. Where are you going? He's just hanging out. So as I mentioned, Titan was my first pet snake ever. And while I obviously don't regret that, I love having him. Looking back on it, I don't think a ball python was the best choice for 
me a first time snake owner. I need to make a whole video on this, but I constantly see ball pythons being labeled as beginner snakes, good first time snakes, and I could not disagree with that more. He was my first snake and like the first month I had him, it was, you know, it was a little bit of a disaster to say the least. I definitely need to make a video all about that though, so stay tuned and hopefully that video will come out soon and I'll explain why I don't really think they're great beginner snakes, but that'll be something for the future, so. Yes, here's Titan. He's all wrapped around my arm with a piece of hair. He's having a lot of fun. Slightly pulling all my hair out of my head, but that's okay. So here we are with my last ball python. Now a lot of you guys probably recognize this guy right here and if you do recognize him you're probably thinking oh my god he got so big and he did and that's a great thing. So for those of you who don't know this is Medusa. He is a super cinnamon ball python and his name is Medusa. I did think he was a girl when I got him but there's a little bit of a story that goes with Medusa here and that is because Medusa is a rescue ball python that that I took in almost a year ago now. It was last summer, so you know, not quite a year, but it, it's approaching a year. So Medusa is actually five years old, despite his small size, but believe it or not, he was about half the size when I got him just like nine months ago. Even though he was like four slash five years old at the time, he was half the size. And basically what happened, Medusa came from someone who was not caring for him properly for the couple years that they had him, and it resulted in him becoming extremely stunted. He was, like I said, four slash five years old and was about the size of like a three month old ball python. He was very small when I got him. And well, he will probably never be as big as most adult ball pythons are because of the stunting in the first few years of his life. He's made a lot of progress. He's grown more than I ever expected him to, but he is such a fun snake. I love owning him. He is just so derpy and curious and cute. He is such a wonderful snake. Even though he cost me almost $800, and vet bills, that's okay because he is a very good snake. So there's Medusa. I will be doing a full update video on him soon because I definitely need to get that done. It's long overdue, so make sure you stick around if you want to see an update on him. So next up, we have a, another snake who I actually won't be taking out of their cage for today's video. Um, again, I will overlay some footage of them, but I'm not going to take them out. So this next snake here is Rocky, who is my Pueblin milk snake. And now the reason that I'm not going to be taking him out today is basically just because he stresses so, so, so much when he's handled. It is not something he tolerates at all. He was actually a rescue. He was also a rescue who I took in a little while ago. And I think because of that, that has to do with the reason why he's just so shy. He was never handled in his previous home and he is a few years old and his care before was very bad. He was in a 40 gallon aquarium with literally nothing. And like when I say nothing, I mean literally nothing. It was an empty cage. Like there was like no substrate, no hides or anything. Like it was just a glass tank. So I took in Rocky from a not so great situation. I've had him for over a year now, but thankfully in the time that I've had him, he's done great just hanging out in his enclosure. He is really, really shy and like so shy. I mean, he won't even eat from tongs or anything. Sometimes when you own animals, you just have to understand that not all of them are going to like to be handled and that is okay. He's still a great little snake. He is beautiful. I absolutely love owning him. He just doesn't really like me, but that's all right. He doesn't really like anyone. So, so yeah, that was Rocky. Let's go ahead and move on to the next snake. So sorry to disappoint, but once again, we have another snake who I will not be removing from their cage for this video. This is the last one that I won't be taking out. The rest of them will be coming out, I promise. But my next snake is my Amazon tree boa. If you guys know anything about Amazon tree boas, it's probably that they are not really a snake that you wanna handle that often. They are definitely not an animal I wanna get a bite by. Um, 
would be a pretty painful bite and they are not hesitant to bite. She's not really an animal that likes to be handled much and again, that's okay. Some animals are just better off being a look, don't touch kind of pet unless you know you have to handle them obviously. But you know, certain animals, they just stress from it really easily. Certain animals just really don't like it and Amazon tree bows tend to be one of those. So I only handle her when necessary. And in my opinion, filming a little YouTube video isn't what I consider necessary. You know, that's just me. But yeah, that, oh, I didn't even say her name. Um, my Amazon tree bow is named Viper. And despite being like the defensive animals that they are, I absolutely love Amazon tree bows. I think that they are beautiful snakes and I think that they're really unique. I love having an arboreal snake. It's definitely really interesting. She's a lot different from all of my other snakes. So she's very unique. And I just really love Amazon tree bows. Again, they're another snake that I would love to have more of in the future because I just think that they are so amazing. So here we have a snake and a, a tube. Um, this is Ghost. Ghost is one of my corn snakes. She was hanging out in this tube and I don't want to force her out. So I just brought her and the whole tube out because why not? <laughs> so thinking back, I remember earlier when I showed you Titan, I said that he was my oldest snake and I lied because Ghost here is my oldest snake. Oh, you're coming out of your tube now. So Ghost here is another rescue that I took in. Oh fun, Ghost's tube has a bunch of dirt in it that is now getting all over me. Thank you, Ghost. That's the sound of dirt falling on my floor. Uh, anyway, so Ghost here is a rescue that I took in a little while back. I've had Ghost for around two years now, I think. And um, basically what happened with her is her previous owners didn't want her anymore and they were threatening to release her outside. And if you don't know, releasing your pet outside is a horrible idea for so, so, so many reasons. I can't go into detail today in this video, but just know it's a horrible idea and more dirt is falling on me. It's a horrible idea and you should never ever do it. Oh. I really, I love this. So anyways, when I found out about this, I offered to take her and they just dropped her off to me for free. So I now have Ghost. Thankfully, Ghost was not released outside. Thank God, because she would be dead if she was. But yeah, here is Ghost. Yes, I, I completely went off track. Anyway, so I was saying, I mentioned earlier that Titan was my oldest snake, but I lied because Ghost is older. Ghost is around eight years old, I believe, could be nine. Actually, she's probably closer to nine now. They told me when they dropped her off to me that she was around seven years old. So she's around nine years old now because I've had her for about two years. Where are you going? Where are you going? So yeah, Ghost is actually my oldest snake and then Titan would be second. Anyway, so this is Ghost. Ghost is my corn snake who's having a lot of fun climbing through my hair. We're gonna go put Ghost back now. So the last snake I have to show you guys is my corn snake, Tangerine. So I was actually just in my reptile room about to grab her to bring her out to show you when I noticed that she was in shed like Casper. So I decided I would leave her alone in her cage, but I do have some footage of her that I will overlay. I actually was recording her just a couple days ago. So I have some footage of her pre-shed. So you guys can still see her while I talk about her. So Tangerine is my corn snake. She is a normal morph. Again, the same with like Angel, my ball python. This is basically how you'll find them in the wild. So she is a nice orange color, you know, she's orange. <laughs> I got Tangerine as a little tiny hatchling and now she's grown quite a lot so she's getting close to being full grown but not quite there yet. So Tangerine wasn't my first snake but I honestly <laughs> wish she was. As I mentioned earlier Titan was my first snake and I had a little bit of issues with that when I first got him and after I got a ball python the next snake that I got was a corn snake and so much easier, let me tell you. If you are looking for a first time snake, I would highly recommend corn snakes. I think that they are one of the best beginner snakes. Corn snake like is way better than a ball python for your first time snake, just trust me on that. So there you go, there were all of my snakes. I really hope that you guys enjoyed meeting all of them. Let me know in the comments like what your favorite kind of snake is or if you have a favorite one of my snakes, you know, let me know down below. I would love to see. 
But yes, there are all my snakes. So all that said, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also be sure to check out all of my social media. It will all be in the description below. I would love to have you guys follow me over there. So please go and check it out. You know, I'd love that. But all of that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all next time.